In a classroom, a student shows his app concept to his professor. The professor says, that concept will never work. It's already been done. The student accepts the criticism from his professor, but he went on to make the app anyways. That student is Evan Spiegel, the CEO of Snap, the company that created Snapchat, which is now valued at $34.7 billion. Imagine how many professionals will give you advice like that about your video concept. Great concept. This will make millions. Terrible concept. It'll fail horribly. Hasn't this been done already? While their opinions may come from real-world experience and mean well, they often are quick knee-jerk reactions. What if I told you there was a more evidence-based approach available to gauge if your idea is worth it in terms of time, energy, or dollars? What is this evidence-based approach? This approach is called concept validation. And it's a thing that can save you from throwing away brilliant ideas or from wasting your resources on ones that no one is interested in. So what is concept validation? You have an idea, a history-based strategy card game, a suspenseful idol game, a 2D battle arena game. That's your concept. It's in your idea stage and you're still figuring things out. While it seems like a good idea to you right now, you have no evidence that anyone else will give a crap about it. So how do we get to that evidence? That all depends on your goals. Let's give you some examples. Maybe you want to validate that you have the ability to make fun and interesting games. Or maybe you want to validate that your game can sell 50,000 copies and allow you to work full time as a game developer so you can continue putting food on the table through your video games. Your goals determine what steps you take for concept validation. So I'm going to assume that you're trying to do the latter, make a game that has potential to sell. There are a few different methods you can use, which I'll cover very quickly. The three methods are one, audience research, where you're investigating the audience. Number two, Competition research, where you're seeing how other games stack up in your niche. And number three, feedback testing, where you test bits in, of the game to see if your idea has legs. Let's look at each one. Method one, audience research. Your goal is to find out if there are people out there that congregate in groups and having conversations about the thing like your idea. For example, if your game's concept is a survival crafting game, are there forums, blogs, websites, in-person conventions, places and communities where people already congregate about the topic? If the answer is yes, then you now have a way in to start asking questions and introducing your game idea to them. The second method is number two, co competition research. Your goal here is to find proof using competitors' public data. For example, let's say you have an idea for a free-running parkour game. You research and discover that there are five other free-running parkour games, and according to Steam Spy, they average about 20,000 downloads within their 12-month release date. From the looks of those other games, do some research and ask yourself, how did they get those 20,000 downloads? Was, was it the marketing around the games, making people naturally go, that's a cool idea, I want to play that? Or was it a big wave of marketing uh, at live events? Was it because a popular film came out and the game's release date helped influence it? Was it because some popular YouTuber decided to cover it and it expanded wildly? Now, once you start to see how they got those downloads, you can see what you can do to get attention and what might be a potential waste of resources. Additionally, if there's no competition at all, I'd be worried. There's a chance that you win the lottery and people flock to your game because of its uniqueness and virality, or they see your game and don't get it, never bother to check it out, or never notice it at all, which is more likely to happen. There's tens of thousands of artsy creative indie games out there laying dormant. The third method of concept validation is feedback testing. The goal is to test it with real people, and it could be a beta test, it could be an alpha test, it could be your initial green light or Kickstarter. It's about incrementally testing it with a bigger and bigger audience, validating that your game has legs. So if you told the world that you have a Kickstarter, a beta test, an alpha test, a green light, and only attracted 100 downloads after all of that, don't expect to suddenly get a million downloads when you launch. Finally, I want to point out the elephant in the room. Validating that there's demand does not mean you have a hit product. There's still the biggest validation, and that's selling your game. If you, but if you skip the line and go straight from selling without validation, you're gambling on your success. But if you take the time to go through each method of validation, only moving forward based on the clues of success, when it's finally time to sell, you'll know that your chances of success are much, much higher because you've proven time and time again that this is a workable format. Thanks again for joining us in Bite Size. 
business education for indie game developers. Short, bite-sized videos that provide real-world marketing, strategy, and education to busy indie game developers. No fluff, no ads, no need to donate. A special thanks to Capital City Television and their staff. This episode is sponsored by Serious Game Devs Only, the community to empower serious game developers like you with business education, so it becomes second nature, letting you focus on making a living with game development and building great games that people want to play.